Coming up on Mountain News at 530, congressional leaders meet with President Biden just days before a government shutdown deadline. And a Supreme Court gun case that carries major consequences. More about the case revolving around a gunman that killed 60 people at a Las Vegas music festival back in 2017. Plus, we are tracking gusty winds and a temperature crash by tomorrow. Those details on the way as Mountain News at 530 starts now. Dedicated to Southern and Eastern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 530. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. Congress has some pressing issues to deal with, including migrants at the southern border, funding for Ukraine and Israel, and a partial government shutdown that is just days away. The leaders of both parties met with President Biden today to discuss the path forward. CBS's Natalie Brand has more from the White House. We got a lot of work to do. Just days before the deadline to avert a government shutdown, Democratic and Republican congressional leaders emerged from their White House meeting expressing optimism. Doing a shutdown would damage the economy significantly, and I think we all agree to that. We believe that we can get to agreement on these issues and prevent a government shutdown. But House Speaker Mike Johnson doubled down on his view that the southern border should be priority number one. The catastrophe at the border is affecting everyone, and it is top of mind for all the American people for that reason. It's still unclear, though, how lawmakers move forward on aid for Ukraine. The intensity in that room was surprising to me. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, who just returned from the war-torn country, emphasized that help cannot wait. It's shaken that here they are fighting without arms against a brutal dictator who will just do anything to kill them. While negotiations for the budget, border, and foreign aid drag on, payroll for government employees, military service members, and their families hangs in the balance. Families are living paycheck to paycheck. Bessa Pinchotti of the National Military Family Association also faults the constant uncertainty of Congress relying on short-term funding deals. We're asking our military families to put themselves in danger while at the same time not knowing whether they can put food on the table. If lawmakers don't reach another agreement by this Friday, agencies including the Departments of Agriculture, Energy and Transportation will run out of money with the Departments of Defense and Justice set to run out next Friday. Natalie Brent, CBS News, the White House. A full shutdown set to take effect March 8th would impact most government services. Some employees like military members and Border Patrol agents would continue to work, but local governments would not get new aid to help shelter migrants. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has qualified to appear on the ballot in Arizona and Georgia this November. American Values 2024, the outside group supporting his independent presidential bid, said it gathered the necessary signatures for ballot access. The PAC still has to submit the signatures to the state's election offices. Kennedy likely does not have enough support to win, but having his name on the ballot could impact outcomes in battleground states. We are tracking some mild and breezy weather on this Tuesday evening. Also watching out for a few spotty rain chances as we go into this evening as well. Up on first alert pinpoint Doppler, most of us are dry, but we are watching out for a few spotty sprinkles pushing into the Cumberland Valley. So a first alert for Wayne County, pushing into McCreary, Whitley, also Campbell and Claiborne County. Possibly a few sprinkles over the next few minutes as this pushes off to the north and east all over the next little bit there. Now we are watching out for this though, a level three enhanced risk of severe weather in place close to the Ohio River from Paducah to Louisville to Cincinnati. That is a level three enhanced risk. So we are watching out for possibly some strong to severe storms, mainly to our north and west as we go into late tonight. Also early on your Wednesday, closer to home, a level one marginal risk is in place on Wednesday. So the threat is much lower in our region, but not zero. So just be sure to stay weather aware as we go into tomorrow, as we are tracking possibly a few strong to severe storms, mainly in the morning hours on your Wednesday. Those current temperatures are well above average. Most of us in the middle to lower 60s and check out these winds gusting to 24 in Middlesbrough, 22 in London, gusting up to 18 over in Harlan County. More gusty winds also on the way as we go into this evening. Also tomorrow, so we do have a wind advisory in place for most of us, and that will last through 4 p.m. on Wednesday. Possibly winds up to 30, 40 or more than 40 miles per hour. More details on that storm threat, plus a big cool down coming up in just a few minutes. Steve.
All right, Cameron, thanks. Hunter Biden will appear for a closed door deposition in Washington tomorrow. The interview came together after months of public sniping, political stunts, the threat of criminal contempt charges and hardball negotiations. Sources familiar with the talks say Hunter Biden agreed to the deposition after two key concessions from Republicans. The deposition will not be filmed and the transcript will be released quickly to the public to avoid selective leaks. A star witness took the stand in an emergency hearing in the Georgia election interference case. The defense for former President Trump and more than a dozen other co-defendants is trying to disqualify the Fulton County DA. District Attorney Fonnie Willis is being accused of being in a romantic relationship with Special Prosecutor Nathan Wade. Terrence Bradley, who represented Wade in his divorce case, was called to the stand. Tomorrow, Senate Democrats will attempt to pass legislation to protect IVF. For Democratic Senator Tammy Duckworth, it's personal. She used IVF to conceive her own two children. She's calling on the Senate to pass the bill unanimously, as just one objection could kill the bill. I'm headed to the Senate floor to call on my colleagues to pass, via unanimous consent, my Access to Family Building Act which would ensure that every American's right to become a parent via treatments like IVF is fully protected, regardless of what state they live in, guaranteeing that no hopeful parent or doctor is punished. Last week, you probably have heard the Alabama Supreme Court ruled frozen embryos are children, leaving many concerned about being held liable for wrongful death if they destroy them. While Congress is gridlocked on any sort of gun legislation, changes on the issue could be coming from the U.S. Supreme Court. WYNT's Washington Bureau reporter Molly Martinez has more on the polarizing case. The question at the heart of this case is, does a bump stock constitute a machine gun? But lawyers from both sides tell me there's so much more at stake. In 2017, a gunman opened fire on a Las Vegas music festival, killing 60 and wounding 413 others. It remains the deadliest mass shooting by a single gunman in American history. The unprecedented carnage count was largely due to bump stocks, a rifle attachment that allowed the shooter to fire 90 rounds every 10 seconds. Following the tragedy, the Trump administration issued a regulation banning bump stocks. Now, that decision is at the Supreme Court. This looks like a gun control case if you look at it quickly, but that's not really the point. Lawyer Tim Rosenberger fears the government penalizing people who owned once legal bump stocks will become a slippery slope for other regulations. If agents, unelected agencies can just pick new definitions of things, uh, that, that's sort of a, a big problem and it goes way beyond gun control. On the other side, Miriam Becker Cohen with the Constitutional Accountability Center believes it is about the guns. This case is fundamentally about whether a common sense regulation decide, designed to save people's lives can be invalidated by the multi-million dollar gun industry. Both agree any decision in this case comes with major consequences. You sort of fear uh, that it's going to jump out of firearm regulation. Literally lives are on the line. Justices will hear oral arguments on Wednesday. A decision is expected by spring. In Washington, I'm Molly Martinez. It took more than two decades, but two men were found guilty of the 2002 murder of Jam Master Jay today. They are Ronald Washington, who was Jay's childhood friend, and Carl Jordan Jr., who was Jay's godson. The Brooklyn jury took about 10 hours to deliberate. Jay was the DJ for the groundbreaking group Run DMC. They were the first rappers to appear on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine, perform on Saturday Night Live, and win a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. Coming up on Mountain News at 5.30, nearly three quarters of Americans qualify to file their federal income taxes for free, but only 2% actually do that. How to find out if you qualify for free filing? And we could see a few strong storms tomorrow. Your first alert forecast after this break.